Welcome back. Our guests in the studio this evening, we're discussing white collar crime. Are Peter Goss, head of anti corruption solutions at PricewaterhouseCoopers, and Alicia Husson, who's the general manager of specialist teams at Aon South Africa. Um, we were going into the break, we were talking about greed, and you, you wanted to come back to that point. Uh, Peter, what, what was the point you wanted to make? Jeremy, you asked it, is it purely greed? Mm. Criminals, white collar criminals, commit fraud for three particular reasons. One, it's a motive. That motive is often aligned to the needs of the person, uh, often aligned to a lifestyle that's extravagant, uh, often aligned to demands around their social uh, keeping up with the Joneses, uh, let's call it. The other element is opportunity. This is where the organization contributes by not controlling well. So those fraud risk management systems we spoke about, those internal controls that are not being applied are one of the other reasons that people with commit fraud opportunity arises because the corporate is weak or the organization is not serious about controlling fraud. Uh, greed is the third uh, reason for it. And yes, you're right. Uh, back to keeping up with the Joneses, back to extravagant lifestyles, back to wanting to have more than you may have based on your current income levels. Now, you talk about so the, the social aspect of, of keeping up with the Joneses and all the rest of it. Let's talk about social media because 59% of the respondents in this PricewaterhouseCoopers report confirmed that their organizations monitor employees' usage of social networking sites. Is that the same sort of thing in the in the insurance industry? Yeah, I think Do you uh, monitor those sites? Uh, yes, we would. And I think uh, purely because of that, uh, we've seen a, a recent development in, in the insurance world where we now have a cyber liability insurance product. Um, where that, that's fairly new. Okay, wait, hang on. What <laughs> is a cyber liability insurance product? That would actually... Otherwise um, known as a CLIP. A cyber, cyber liability, liability insurance yeah, cyber product. Cyber liability is uh, actually, uh, uh, it's becoming a lot more popular. C uh, companies are actually looking at, I think mainly, it, it, if I can uh, summarize in three uh, three points, uh, it goes beyond the normal financial loss. So your, your fidelity, your commercial crime policy will cover their company for the financial loss that they suffer. The cyber liability policy will go one step further. It, it, it could consider issues like the consequential losses that you might suffer. In other words, your reputational damage, okay. um, a media cost to actually try and, and, and bring the reputation back into line. And then also, the, uh, I think the third biggest one is the third party liability that you now have because you are the custodian of all these customers' information. Um, and if there's a leak or breach of that information, customers can actually hold you liable for that. And the cyber policy will actually pick up those direct cost because a, a customer can now come and claim from you because his, per, his credit card information has leaked to somebody else and he suffered a loss or his reputation has suffered. Um, so cyber liability policies I think goes hand in hand with the trend that we see there. It's becoming a, a lot more popular than just covering your peer direct financial loss. What's important about that, Jeremy, you yeah. note from the survey, is the survey historically produced three top Top, uh, top three crimes being asset misappropriation, very much aligned. Number one on the list, asset misappropriation, which is your regular day-to-day -day fraud committed by every organization is exposed to fraud. You, you, you're not never going to have fraud in any organization. So we call it asset misappropriation, a relatively petty type of fraud. As, um, in, as in what? As in manipulation of your travel claims, manipulation of your company credit card, okay. fuel expenses, um, entertainment uh, allowances. Yeah. Okay. Um, secondly, you have uh, what we see quite more, more pronounced in South Africa, which is bribery and corruption. Third on the list is fraudulent financial um, uh, reporting. Uh, and the new kid on the block is cyber fraud. Sorry. So a third of companies surveyed tell us that they're experiencing cyber fraud. Interesting that the insurance industry actually has specific policies governing cyber fraud. What, what, what is cyber fraud? Cyber fraud is simply use of the internet or a computer resource to commit fraud. The most common type of cyber fraud, quite uh, a serious type of cyber fraud, is diversion of payments to unauthorized beneficiaries by simply hacking into the system of an organization. I'm aware of one particular matter in which 30 million rand was diverted uh, by simply sitting in a li public library, hacking into the system of a particular organization and diverting 30 million rand in 15 different payments. 
uh, totaling 30 million rand, of course, to unauthorized accounts. Now, but then those people who are doing it, and I'm a technological moron, okay, but those people who are doing it have obviously got a link inside the company and they, they are working with, with somebody in the company. Are, are, there, are there people within companies that you found in the, the, the research that are working with syndicates, with, with, with huge fraudsters and that? In simple terms, half of fraud is committed by external people and half of fraud is committed by internal uh, and, players. And they and work they they together. Collusion, work together. Sometimes alone and sometimes collusively, yeah. absolutely. Definitely. And that's the same case in, in, in your industry? Yeah. Um, the, 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 the phishing attacks where somebody would actually, where your, your password has actually been and your uh, sign-on has been um, uh, pro uh, compromised. Um, we found some incidents where people would, for example... Oh, those, I, th I was sitting here thinking, what are you talking fishing, about? Fishing, sorry, fishing attacks. Fishing. <laughs> so, so two fishermen Not standing the there fishing, beating fishing. each other. Or something. Uh, oh, fishing, yeah. obviously, oh, yes, where the they, they're correct, yeah. Um, those type of incidents, sometimes we've, we've come across case, cases where uh, uh, syndica syndicates will actually uh, target individuals. Um, and pay their money for, for, for giving um, their sign-ons if they work at banks, financial institutions, because that will give them an in. And obviously some people for 5,000 Rand um, to, to just give your username and password away. Um, we've see, we see that happening quite a bit of Jeremy, time as well. Jeremy, you say fishing, PH. Yeah. We yeah. also have farming attacks. PH. PH. Okay, yes. now explain, uh, please. <laughs> please explain to me what a farming attack is. A farming attack is going out, um, a, a criminal going out via the web, or a, a, a computer device, or computer access, and inviting people to supply their banking credentials or other um, credentials, uh, bank account, credit card details, under the premise of you'll get a benefit of some sort. You might recall the historical Nigerian 419 scam. Yes. Um, this is very much an electronic version of the Nigerian 419 scam, if you like. Yeah. Is there, have you been able to identify any specific industries where this is more prevalent or is this across all industries? Because you earlier said every company is at risk. It's across all industries. If you want to know who's on top of the list though, it's communications. Telecoms is certainly a growth industry globally. Not a surprise for us. Certainly in our country, telecoms is a very strong industry. Mm -hmm. Insurance, second on the list. And interestingly, government and public services, third on the list. I would have probably put government and, and parastatals first on the list, to be honest, if you'd asked me to guess. But uh, uh, what, where, where's it coming from? We'll get to insurance in a moment. But telecoms, how's that? Where's the fraud coming in there? Telecommunications industry is their biggest threat is electronic syndicates, is, is crime syndicates uh, committing what they call network fraud, accessing their networks and diverting or utilizing their networks to run their own accounts uh, in simple terms. So uh, it's not a, a complex corporate fraud per se, but certainly electronically driven telecoms fraud they call network fraud is the most pronounced. In the insurance industry, where's your biggest threat coming from? Um, I would say it's pretty much a, a mix between sort of large corporate, but uh, from, from our perspective, I think we're experiencing it more in the financial services industry. Um, obviously, large number of employees, easy access to money, um, easy access to, to the opportunities to, 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 to commit crime. We see it definitely, it's, it's leaning towards financial. And, and I would include the insurance companies with it, within the financial services sector. So you are actually ripping yourselves off sometimes. <laughs> Insurance companies, not brokers. <laughs> <laughs> How can uh, I'm, I'm, I'm a CEO of a company watching the show right now, and I'm thinking, okay, what can I take? What measures can I take? Preemptive measures um, against this new cyber crime that that seems to be hitting? Because I would imagine this is only going to get worse. Absolutely, Jeremy. We are finding that companies are terribly controlled. Um, they, con they, they don't control the risk of cybercrime well. It's really a concern. Um, you need to understand the risks around your data security, your information security, uh, your computer networks. You need to understand those risks well, better than you ever did. Not in the customary or legacy business risk context, but also to the risk of unauthorized attack 
we as business, le business leaders don't often think about controlling risk with the eye on fraud and corruption and economic crime risk. They control risk from the perspective of liquidity, business growth, uh, core business one, should, mm. one, one can call it. Yeah. And they forget this sometimes relegated to secondary risk. It certainly should be higher up on the list now and be a primary I, risk. I would imagine that there are a fair amount of senior managers, though, who are not up to speed with the, the, the changes in the IT industry that all the, for want of a better word, the IT geeks are running with. And you've got these 28-year-old guys who have got all of this knowledge. And as a senior manager, as somebody in your 50s, uh, you've got to try and relearn this to, to make sure that you can put the, the right controls in place. And it must be a fairly difficult thing to do. What, what, would, what would your advice be to a, um, a senior manager? My advice would certainly be I would start off where, where, uh, where, you, where you do the risk management work. I would say that you need to be able to identify and have a process in place to actually record the losses that you do suffer. I think insurance is the last, the last thing that you should be thinking of. So I think all of these things should happen first. And then once you know the risk that you are exposed to, then you should look at insurance as a last resort. Because if you suffer, for example, high frequency of, of these incidents um, with low severity, it's, it's no point in insuring that because if you have, if you suffer 10 million rands worth of losses, an insurance company is going to charge you 12 million to cover that risk. So that 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 risk you, sh you could self-insure via a, a sell captive insurance or a wholly owned insurance company if you want to, and then I would say insure in excess of that. So you at least know that your exposure is capped but you should first do the risk management work to know what you're exposed to. And I think from a senior management perspective, you should, your, your chief information officer, your CIO, should be the person that you are looking to, to actually educate the rest of the management team in insofar as the security aspects are concerned. It's a scary thought that you've got to start watching your employees so closely because they can do so much damage and so much harm to your company and to its uh, integrity as well.